Hi, my name is Jim Buvid, and today we're going to look into Adobe Bridge, and I'm going to give you a, a number of different uh, pointers on the program. In this particular segment, we're going to look into the uh, preference settings. So let's get Bridge open up here for us. And you'll find that Bridge is just a very powerful program, and I find that most people I talk to don't make use of more than you know half of some of this you know the special search features that are built right into it, some of the presentation features. And I hope that um, as you go through these lessons and you re-review them, you're going to really learn some great techniques. So let's start out with looking at the preferences. I'm just going to go up on top here. Number one is just take a look at camera raw preferences. Very often people wonder how they can open up JPEG images, you know, using Bridge and have it open up in Camera Raw because as you'll find in one of our other uh, videos, Camera Raw has an amazing amount of capabilities for brightening, sharpening, you know, clarifying, uh, doing all sorts of, you know, color adjustments with images and this is all very easy to work with once you kind of see it presented. Well down here under JPEG TIFF Handling, if you set it to automatically open all supported JPEGs, now the next time you click on a JPEG, it's going to open up. And same thing with TIFFs. If you click automatically open all supported TIFFs, it, it'll do the same. I only use this feature occasionally, so usually I leave it you know, disabled uh, because I find it's just gonna confuse things if I leave that um, on. Now, starting at the top here though, you have uh, save image settings in Sidecar XMP files or Camera Raw database. Typically, you don't want to use the Camera Raw database mainly because as you're making settings to your images, it keeps all of those settings in an XMP file in the database only on that one particular computer. And that's going to be a problem if you open up images from another computer. You want to leave it Sidecar XMP files and that's going to work just fine and apply sharpening. I have it set to all images because I find that right now the sharpening routines that are uh, built into this are a lot better than they were in the past. And we used to have a choice, or I should say we still have a choice to set it to preview images only, but I don't necessarily use that anymore. I like to have mine sharpened. I have it set to a very low setting, but it works out just fine. And some of the default image settings, generally I don't like to have things done automatically to uh, my images. So the only thing I have set is just the auto uh, grayscale mix when converting to grayscales. But I typically am doing that in Photoshop anyways. Now down here under Camera Raw uh, Purge, uh, you can actually clean out some huge amount of files that most people don't realize are accumulating on their computer. Here I found mine is set into a location of user, my name, library, cache, and under Adobe Camera Raw, you're gonna find a folder that has Camera Raw cache files. And occasionally, if you don't uh, delete those, it's just gonna take up sometimes you know many gigabytes of data on your file that don't need to be there and all camera raw cache is referring to is when you uh, have the images appear on the screen they sometimes take just a minute or so to bring up maybe 10 or so different images well it stores that cache in the cache file so if you purge it it's going to just have to redraw it and so it's not a problem and it doesn't delete it automatically so this is why you'll need to do that you know yourself and under DNG uh, file handling, you can have it ignore the XMP files, but generally, you know, you're going to want to be able to utilize that. So let's just click that off, and that's just the camera raw prefs. And then now let's go under regular prefs. And if you start right at our top under general, uh, you've got your appearance settings. And let me just slide these back and forth a little bit. You can lighten the background, darken the background, so you can really set it to your taste. Same with the image background, lighten it darken it. So you've got a lot of little choices here. You can set your uh, accent colors to change. If we change it here, you see how now under the computer it's a different color. I typically like to see mine just a little bit lighter. And you can have the behavior change. Uh, if you connect the camera uh, to it, you can have it automatically launch Adobe Photo Downloader. Um, uh, some people make use of this. Um, I personally don't use it as much as uh, uh, some people I know. It it's, depends on your workflow and how you like to uh, work on the images. Same with double clicking. It can edit it in camera raw. I typically don't like to do that. And then for looking at your favorite items, you can turn on these particular ones here. 
Now, when we go into uh, thumbnails, uh, gives you the uh, option to uh, turn on different things to uh, uh, have displayed when you're showing the uh, image. I don't typically uh, put on a lot of that. Uh, with playback, that ha mainly works with uh, video, uh, not as essential for a lot of the photography work that you're going to be doing. Uh, metadata just shows you the multitude of different things that are uh, capable of being you know, uh, displayed if you need to. Uh, keywords, once again, you can uh, put keywords um, on your uh, pictures, and, and I'll show you with labels as well. Um, you can turn, um, you know, automatically apply parent keywords. Um, I don't ne necessarily work with those as much. Uh, with labels, once again, you can actually change the name of the labels if you care to. Uh, you can require to have the command key on when you touch it or not. File types. This just shows all the uh, different file types that are able to be viewed with Bridge, which is really helpful because I do utilize it a lot when I'm uh, showing video or listening to music and trying to find uh, different files there. And cache is one of these, uh, um, it seems unassuming, but it's a very critical uh, um, a setting to have. Uh, if you uh, inadvertently turn on keep 100% previews in cache, it's actually going to accumulate huge amounts of data there in your cache files and you don't necessarily want that. Automatically export cache to folders when possible is another thing. I don't necessarily find it to be very, very helpful. And once again, you can choose exactly where you want the cache files to go, but generally it's in a very logical uh, place under uh, uh, caches, Adobe, uh, Bridge, and then cache. Um, cache files, this is some, sometimes very critical um, if you're having problems with Bridge uh, being able to read files quickly. When I say read, I mean show them on the screen. And if, at first uh, I was having some problems with this and, and when I talked to Adobe about it, they suggested making the cache size a little bit smaller. Now that I've got a lot more RAM in my machine and I have a much, much larger hard drive, uh, I was able to put this up and I did find that it worked a little bit smoother. Now, compacting cache, uh, it says it improves performance by optimizing the cache. I don't necessarily find that to be super helpful. I tend to put a lot of images on the computer, work with them, and then I take them off the computer. So I'm not leaving them on there for great lengths of time. So for me, it's just simpler to once in a while purge the cache. And be aware you're not erasing or throwing away any files other than the actual image file that comes up to show it on the screen. And basically a cache just keeps it there so it can show it faster the, the next time you happen to view it. So if you throw it away, each time you go back to the folders, it's gonna take just a little bit longer that first time to show them. But once it's built into cache again, it's gonna be uh, working just fine. Uh, startup scripts, um, generally I just leave them set the way they are. Advanced, you can have bridge startup at login and I used to do that all the time but occasionally I found that it doesn't necessarily have to be there I'm working on a lot of other projects as well uh, generate monitor size previews is very dangerous to have turned on because it can create just monster files that are just building up in your computer generally that's just used if you're going to be showing a few images and you want them to be screen size and you're going to show them uh, uh, frequently but you're not going to be showing lots of different images that would be the one time you might want to use that and uh, using software rendering is um, you know I would leave that off you're not going to gain any advantages with uh, the new version of uh, bridge and output uh, generally I just leave it set here with the multi-bit file names for ASCII it's generally helpful with some of the files that I send uh, up for uh, viewing on my website and when you close that um, you basically have uh, the major preview settings uh, you know set here and then the one other thing that I'd like to point out is when you first get bridge a lot of people will uh, either download it from the internet or they might have a, a DVD that they got it on and frequently when you get it it's probably several months old and it might be not the most current version so if you go down to updates and you click on it you'll frequently find that there are updates in fact just before I started recording this I found that there were two major updates that were over 100 megabytes each for bridge and for Photoshop so now it just shows that I'm up to date and I'm all set and that's the end of this particular segment <music>